Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is new features of concrete design add-on for RFM6 and RStart9. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and public relations in the company Dluba Software. For instance, the Dluba website, the German and English webinars, newsletters, and so on. I will be the moderator today and answer your questions together with Alexander Meyerhofer and Adrian Langhammer. And uh, Paul Kieloch will yeah, present the webinar in RFM6, but my colleagues can introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Paul Kieloch. I'm a product manager and customer support engineer at Gluba Software. And uh, today I will show you new features in our concrete design um, uh, add-on in RFM6. Good afternoon, also from my side. My name is Alexander Meyerhofer. I'm the head of product engineering concrete. Um, I'm working in the development of the concrete uh, add-ons and also in the geotechnical analysis products. Uh, I will answer today your questions in the chat. Yeah, hello. My name is uh, Adrian. I'm responsible for um, the customer support and especially there for the concrete design. Um, but I'm also uh, responsible for the development and there especially for the testing of the program and for the topic construction stages. And I also will answer your questions today. Okay, thank you for your introduction. Then we can switch off our webcams so that the attendees can see the full screen. For the attendees who participate the first time, you can show or hide the control panel on the right side of your screen, and you can enter a short question here, and we will answer you. If there are too many questions, yeah, sometimes at the end of the webinar, uh, yeah, that happens sometimes, and we can't answer all questions, then you will get an email after the webinar. The other way is to watch the entire webinar and then email your questions to info at gluba.com. Okay, that's all from my side. <coughs> I hand over the screen to Paul. Paul, it's your turn. Okay, thanks Andreas for the introduction. Um, I will start with a short overview about the uh, content of the today's uh, presentation. So, um, as I already mentioned, I will uh, show you today um, new features in our concrete design add-on. Um, therefore, I will create a small uh, structure in RFM6. And uh, during the modulation process, I will tell you um, all the new features which we have uh, now in our concrete design add-on. Um, just a short overview about these uh, new features. Um, mainly it's the automatic function for surface reinforcement. Um, then we have also um, yeah, a new function regarding determination of required reinforcement for members, which includes now also the serviceability limit state design. Um, then I will show you how to design um, with member representatives. We have also a new multi-edit uh, option in the edit member um, dialog for members and member sets. Um, if we have entered a reinforcement um, and we have a certain reinforcement layout uh, inside our member, then we have a new function for printing graphics of this reinforcement template or proposal into the printout report. I will show this also to you. And um, I will show you um, how to activate the design check for this uh, shear joint in uh, the add-on. Mm -hmm. uh, general, uh, In general, um, if you would like to know whether we have new features implemented in our software, um, you can uh, switch over to our website by using this uh, link here in this presentation. Or you can also uh, sign into a global extranet. And if you switch there to the development, um, then you can filter um, the product add-on concrete design. And then you see all implemented new features and a list of them. OK, um, with that words, I would switch directly to RFM6. 
And uh, as I mentioned before, I will start with creating a new model. Therefore, I'm opening a new model file. And what I would like to do today is uh, starting with a template uh, that has the benefit that um, yeah, there are some settings stored already in the template and also um, yeah, uh, add-ons uh, can be activated or I could predefine here some uh, you know, national annexes and so on. So this is already set in this template and um, I would give the name here a webinar and maybe English, so that's the English one. And I start this file here. And as mentioned, uh, due to the fact that I've used these templates, I have here a certain amount of materials, uh, sections, thicknesses, and so on. And I will use them today for this presentation. So at first, um, I'm switching here to this guide objects and there I will create a new line grid. And I will use or show you today also the labels here and the dimensions. Switch you over and enter the dimensions in x directions in x direction, five meters and four spans. So it looks like this. And in y direction, the first span with five meters. Then I have 2.5 meters and two spans. And the last one is again five meters. So this is my line grid, which I would like to use today. It looks like this. And on this line grid, I will create my slab and my beams and columns and so on. So um, I can switch off the grid in the background and then it's a little bit cleaner if you just see the line grids. Okay, um, the first topic um, is uh, at, uh, entering a surface for design. So I'm creating here a concrete surface with the thickness of 250 millimeter and this concrete here. And before I'm entering this uh, surface, I can directly set the design properties for this slab. So concrete cover and the concrete durability clause, I leave it as it is by default here in this example, uh, XC1. Uh, the reinforcement direction is also default. Um, and I will yeah, consider here and assign here a, a basic reinforcement for the whole slab um, with a diameter of 10 millimeter and a spacing of 15 centimeters in both direction. Mm -hmm. You see here already um, some changes in this uh, dialogue and I will come back to this uh, yeah, changes and modifications of this dialogue here in this latest uh, version of R from 6 um, later after the first calculation. Okay, I can confirm this. Um, the design configurations, I leave them also by default for this first attempt here and I will also come back later to this uh, design configurations. Last thing I am changing here is the um, reference length for the uh, deflection analysis. So I switch this to manually and the reference length is now here set to five meters. So in, I have five meters in um, X and Y direction and I uh, switch this manually to five meters. Confirm with OK and then I create here my slab. So. By default, you see here also the uh, rendering of the assigned uh, reinforcement mesh. And what's new now in RFM in the latest version is here the uh, description of the assigned reinforcement. In the latest version, we changed it a little bit. In the previous version, there was, was a small arrow downwards and upwards. And if it, the arrow was downwards, then it was the reinforcement uh, on the bottom side and if it was upwards then it was the uh, reinforcement on the top side of the slab um, that was now changed a little bit and it's uh, just a small line next to the text on the downside or on the upper side so it's a small change here um, what i would like to change is here the number of 
decimal places for this example. Okay. And now I'm switching off this reinforcement just to have a cleaner look on the file or on the structure. Okay, perfect. So the next topic is that I would like to enter a beam here or a rib member in this axis D. Therefore, I create a new member, switch the type here to rib, and I'm um, yeah, assigning this uh, eccentric uh, cross section on the uh, positive Z side of the surface. It's a setting by default, and the uh, used section should be this 250 by 500 millimeter section. Can confirm that is okay. And then I will assign this rib here in this axis. And here in this axis three, in this point in the middle of the beam, I would like to support this beam with a column. And therefore, I'm dividing this member here by one internal node. Um, but what's new in RFM6 is that we can use this um, node type on member. And uh, that would have the benefit that our member is not divided in two parts. And that makes it a little bit easier for definition of reinforcement and so on. So I will create a new node just with the type on member without dividing the member. Okay. And you see this here in the middle of the beam with a yeah, blue, light blue uh, node. And yeah, that's the new type for uh, dividing members. Okay, mm, the next steps I would like to do is um, entering here nodes for the column heads. So they are here in these points. Okay, and now I'm switching to the wireframe display model and I can select these five nodes here. And then I will copy them with three meters in Z direction. And um, I can link these steps here and enter automatically a new member. Therefore, I will create a template. The um, columns should be uh, hinged at the top end and the bottom end. So I'm switching here the member type to truss. The section is pre-selected in this case, um, like I would like also to use it with 250 by 250 millimeters. And um, I can now go through all the settings, all these design properties here, and entering, for example, the um, buckling length for the stability analysis. And in my example, it's a braced system. And I would like to use this effective length factors of one in both directions. Okay, next step would be the concrete covering. I leave it here in this example like it is. Um, regarding the shear force, I would like to use um, shear links with uh, yeah, a thickness or diameter of 10 millimeter and a spacing of 15 centimeters. And the longitudinal reinforcement should be uniform surrounding, um, four rebars and a diameter of 14 millimeters. Okay. Design uh, configuration and design um, supports are not required to change here in this case. So I can confirm this. And then I'm using the template to create my columns. And they would look like this. I have just to take care because uh, these nodes, this node is here in the center of this eccentric beam. So um, the nodes and at the bottom end are not in the same height. I will just do a double click here on this node and switch this to three meters. And then we have the same level here. Okay, then I can create the supports for these columns due to the fact that I have hinged um, uh, yeah, member ends by this member type, I can create a new 
nodal support and this is fixed or rigid in all directions. That would look like this in this example. Okay, then the next topic would be entering the uh, support at the edge of the slab. So they would like to consider walls. Therefore, therefore we have also an option in RFM6. So I can select all the lines at the edge of the slab, opening, opening them with a double click, and I will assign there a support, create a new one for them. And this one will be changed to um, local. And as soon as I switch this to local, um, I'm getting here a new option, stiffness via a fictive wall. And the wall thickness should be 25 centimeters and a height of three meters. And it is uh, hinged at the wall head and base. So that's okay for me can confirm this. And then I have also the lines uh, on the edge of the slab supported. If I would like to um, check this graphically in my system, then I can switch to the uh, view or display navigator. Mm, and there under the line supports, I have the option to activate the walls. And then I would see the uh, system also with this fictive uh, walls here. Okay. That is basically my system now. Um, what I have not uh, defined yet is um, yeah, the settings regarding the RIP. Um, therefore, I'm opening the RIP member once again. And I switch to this tab here with the RIP. And in this table, you can basically um, assign the segment lengths for the de determination of the effective width for the ribs. Um, I will not go too much into detail for this part. We have shown this in um, our first uh, webinar regarding concrete design in uh, November 2021. Um, and it's also part of the Eurocode 2 training where we get more into detail regarding this uh, table. I will just enter the values here to have a realistic, um, yeah, realistic, realistic effective width for this example. I'm using here this approach according Eurocode 2. So I'm setting the segments here. Okay. Eurocode 2. Then, okay, user defined, it's the same on the other side. Basically, I have to do this because I'm using one member which is supported in the middle, and therefore the program needs the reference length. Okay. So the system would look like this now here. So I have um, different uh, effective uh, widths uh, here in the fields, left and right uh, field and over the column. Um, I'm using a smaller width and the width is uh, determined by the equation according to Eurocode 2. Um, what I can now also here assign is a linear distribution here um, over this column. Uh, over the support in the middle. So therefore you have the option to assign to end and from start. And then I would get here a linear distribution of the effective um, width. So that's what I would like to use today. And um, I will stay here in this um, uh, yeah, tab because here is uh, now already our first new um, feature. Um, you find here in the middle uh, the option to activate the design check for the shear force between web and flange. So if you would like to perform this design check, then you have to activate this option here. And then you get the um, you know, settings regarding the roughness of the um, surface. 
you can set it here up in this dialog and um, there is also a second um, setting in the configuration um, I will show it to you um, yeah, in some minutes so next is the section tab there I do not have to do any changes this is okay so far concrete covering also so I can directly switch to the shear reinforcement I would like to use here um, shear links, uh, stirrups with a diameter of 10 millimeter and a spacing of 0.5 meters. And I will not use this for the whole length of the member, but I would like to um, have a yeah, span in the middle of the beam where I have a 10 centimeter spacing between the um, mm, stirrups. So therefore I'm creating mm, new spans. I first switch here to absolute for the definition of the span length. Then I just click two times on this button. And then I'm getting here these spans. If I zoom in a little bit, then you see that here this middle span is now a little bit displaced and not in the middle of the member. And I can change this here to six meters. And in the second, uh, X location to nine meters in my example. And then the span is in the middle of the beam and I can change this to 0 0.1 meters or 10 centimeters spacing. Okay, that's my shear reinforcement I would like to use today. And then I'm switching to the longitudinal reinforcement. Um, by default, the reinforcement um, um, is using here three rebars at the top side and on the bottom side. Um, I will change it to four rebars. And then you find also um, here the um, yeah, rebars from the surface reinforcement, which is automatically um, also assigned to the flanges of the uh, rib member. If you do not want to um, assign these, um, yeah, surface reinforcement here, then you can switch it off via this button, but I will leave it on here for this example. Uh, last thing I would like to add here is a additional reinforcement here on the sides of the web. So therefore I'm creating a new item. And this one is a uniform surrounding for my example here. And um, uniform surrounding. and six rebars with a diameter of 12 millimeters. And then I have to enter here a offset from the stirrup and from the top side it's 150 millimeters and on the bottom side also 150 millimeters. And then it looks like this. Then I would um, yeah, consider these uh, three rebars on each side of the web here for the reinforcement. Now, if you have um, entered um, the shear reinforcement or the longitudinal reinforcement uh, like this, and you would like to print a graphic of this uh, definition into the printout report, there is also a new feature. Um, you can click on this button here, um, and then you get a new dialog called reinforcement uh, reinforcement layout and in this dialog we have here a new um, button a new function and there you can print the graphic here um, directly into for example the printout report or 3d pdf uh, or um, yeah a graphic as a file so it's not a, a, a CAD file, it's a picture file. So you have this option, basically the same like uh, for printing a graphic, uh, regular graphic into the printout report. So that's also a new feature in the add-on. Okay, then I'm switching to the tab with the design configurations. Um, there we have the ultimate configuration and the serviceability configuration. And in both configurations, we have now two uh, new features, or in every uh, configuration, we have one new feature. Um, if I'm switching to the ultimate configuration, um, 
then you can see here this shear joint and that is what I have um, activated before in this uh, tab with the rip. So in general, there is always the shear joint um, uh, design check activated and there you'll find uh, further settings, for example, how the program um, determines the shear stress in the joint um, or you can also activate here uh, design of flange connection on segmented cross section. So if you would like to perform these design checks, then you can check it on here in this uh, ultimate configuration. So just keep in mind, this is always uh, active, but you have also to take care here whether you have activated the uh, shear joint um, in the individual members. Mm. The next new feature is inside the serviceability configuration. So um, inside the uh, serviceability configuration for the members, you find here a new option, determination of longitudinal reinforcement for members. We have uh, implemented this in the end of last year. And now it's possible, if you check this option on, uh, to consider also the parts from serviceability limit state in the result diagrams for the required reinforcement. So in the older version, older versions of RFM6, um, there was just the uh, ultimate limit state um, considered in the uh, di diagrams for the required reinforcement. And by activating these options, um, the diagram will also consider the parts from the serviceability limit state. If you click on this here, then you get here a little tooltip. Mm. And there you see that currently um, this option considers the um, requirement for the minimum uh, longitudinal reinforcement, the design check for the limit diameter, or um, uh, the maximum spacing. So the direct um, crack width calculation is currently not implemented. Okay. That's so far regarding the um, new features in the configurations. Um, one last topic I have to enter here is the, um, or all the design supports. Um, in concrete design, we are checking the um, deflection in Z direction. So I'm switching here over um, local Z axis. And if I zoom out a little bit, then you see that the member length is 15 meters. So um, this dialog basically does not know that we have here a column in the middle of the member. Um, so the reference length would be by default the total member length and for the deflection analysis that would uh, not be okay in this case. So I have to enter here uh, design supports to consider this uh, correctly. Um, I'm creating here a new one monolithic layer with a width of 250 millimeter in my example. And that will be assigned at the start at and the end of the beam. And then we have also one here in the middle. That is an inner support, also 250. And as soon as I have uh, assigned these design supports to this internal node here, then you see that we have two spans here, uh, each with 7.5 meters. Okay. We have defined our um, reinforcement for the member. And the next uh, steps I would like to uh, do, or next topics I would like to enter here with the structure, is a FE mesh refinement. I uh, would like to assign the FE mesh refinement here on these nodes. So I'm selecting them. Double click FE mesh refinement. And I create a new one that should be rec rectangle in my case, and I'm using here a uh, inner length of uh, 7.5 centimeters. 
Okay, so it looks like this. And I can now, if I have uh, assigned AF image refinement, also use here in this um, situation a um, surface result adjustment to use average values of the surface um, internal forces. And therefore, I'm going to the special objects here, and there you find the surface result adjustments. So I create a new one for the surface one. Um, I will use here um, yeah, dimension in A and B direction with seven, um, 0 0.75 meters, both directions. And with this button, I can set the first location. And then I'm, if I click on apply, then I can just show you where this is located now. Um, I'm just using this button here for copying this um, assigned surface result adjustment. And then it's pretty easy to create them, just clicking on copy and switch the location. goes like this here. Okay. And if I click on apply, then you see them here in my um, file. Okay. The next step would be to enter the loading. So before I'm doing this, I just want to check whether my structure is uh, correctly entered, whether there is some maybe some problems regarding F image, F image and so on. Therefore, I would just uh, calculate the um, first low case here. And yeah, that looks okay. Everything seems to be connected properly. Um, and now I can show you also if I switch here to the um, internal forces of the surfaces, how the surface resultments uh, are working here. Um, yeah. So everything seems to work. And now I can switch off the results and the F-image maybe, and I can switch also of the um, surface result adjustments that are here the uh, result objects. And I'm also switching off here type for nodes, the nodal mesh refinements. And then I have a cleaner look on the file. Okay. Now I can start with entering the load. Um, at first I need some new load cases for this situation. Um, so my first load case will be the load case for the self-weight. I will call it just the for dead load. And then I will create new one here, live load and one maybe. And I'm using this category. And I'm copying this. And then this one is live load two. This one is live load three, and this one is four. Okay, apply. The actions are okay in this example. I'm switching to the design situations. The design situation um, serviceability limit state frequent is not required here in my example, so I can delete this one and I will do the design checks just with the characteristics and the quasi permanent um, design situations. Mm, one change is that I will create load combinations according first order analysis. So I'm switching that here and switching to the action combinations. And then if I click on this tab, I will get the result combinations and they are all according first order analysis. Okay, that are my load combinations for this example. And now I can uh, start filling these um, load cases with loads. So the first load case, dead load, will have 1.5 kilonewton per square meter on surface number one. And it looks like this. 
Um, here in, this, in the uh, second load case, it's now a little bit more problematic. Uh, for the live load, I would like to um, use um, yeah, a loading pattern according to this uh, grid, to these fields here. Um, currently, we do not have a load wizard for this, so I will create the loading pattern by using three um, surface loads, rectangular loads and polygon loads. Um, for this situation here, so I'm in um, my load case 2 and I will create a rectangular load on the surface number 1. Um, the load value is here in my example 3.8 kN per square meter and the location here is from that point to that point. And I can click on apply next. And then I see here the load in this field. And now I just entering the surface and switching the location once again. Looks like this. Apply next. One. And here, in this point. And OK. So in this situation here and in this situation, it's um, a little bit more complicated. So I cannot use the rectangle one. I will use the polygon load here. It's also assigned to surface number one. And then from this point to that one and that one, confirm is OK. The load value is also 3.8. OK, and then I need this function once again. And now from here to these nodes, OK. And it looks like this. So I switch to the next load case. And I'm starting once again with the rectangle 3.8. Here, apply next. Here, apply next. here and OK. And then I'm switching to this rectangle once again, or to this uh, polygon load here. From that point to that and that point. OK. 3.8. OK. For the live load 3, I'm using the rectangle again. Surface number one, 3.8 kilonewton per square meter. And it's from here to here. And then I can click also here, apply next. And then I can switch here the load case in this dialog, assign it to surface number one again, and switch the nodes. And then it would look like this. Um, if I'm entering these loads um, like this, then I'm uh, always um, starting a short calculation progress. So I'm going to, to calculate. I'm just selecting the load cases where I have assigned three loads. Start the calculation. And now what I'm always doing here is I'm switching on the load distribution here in RFM. Um, I'm switching off the load here itself, but just the 2D elements. So now I can switch to all load cases and just check whether the three loads were um, applied correctly. So I have here my 3.83 kilonewton per square meter, so I can directly um, yeah, control the loading pattern here. Okay, that looks okay so far. Um, so we have entered our combinations and also our loading. And now I can basically start with the first um, yeah, calculation for in the concrete design add-on. Mm. Therefore, I'm switching here in the table to the add-on concrete design. And by default, um, all objects are activated here. 
but I will do the first um, attempt here just for the surface number one. And then I'm starting the calculation. It takes a moment and then the program will show us the design checks for the surface number one. And we can check the design ratios at first for the ultimate limit state. And then we can check where we have to enter additional reinforcement. Okay, so um, basically if you do uh, surface design, this dialog will in uh, most cases look like this or similar. So you have several points where it's not designable or you have not designable nodes. Therefore, I would switch over here to this uh, design checks on surfaces. And um, in my case, I would like to check it, for example, for the top side in direction one. And then it looks like this, that um, especially over the columns, um, I have elements where my design checks are not fulfilled. So um, here you see it, it's a range from one to um, yeah, almost three times not fulfilled uh, design checks. That's the same also in the other direction. And on the bottom side, it looks a little bit better, but uh, yeah, there's also a small problem here in um, this area. So um, if I have this result um, diagram in this way, then I can also switch to the reinforcement. So on the reinforcement, um, I can switch on the reinforcement, the required longitudinal reinforcement on the top side. And then I see these values here. Um, and one yeah, more informative uh, um, yeah, graphic would maybe switching over to not, co uh, not covered reinforcement. So uh, we have uh, assigned here a, a basic reinforcement of 5.24 square centimeters per meters. And now it would be interesting where I have to um, assign additional reinforcement. And therefore I'm switching over to this not covered reinforcement. And that is like I said before, basically over the columns and here uh, in the middle of the beam, there's also one area where I would need additional reinforcement. Um, now, if I'm entering additional reinforcements, there we have a new feature. And therefore, I'm switching here in the data navigator to the types for concrete design, surface reinforcement, and I create a new surface reinforcement. Um, this new surface reinforcement will be also assigned to surface number one, but now not on the total surface, uh, but um, it will be changed here in my case to a um, pre-rectangular um, location type. Um, the first uh, additional reinforcement, I will assign them just on the top side, and I will enter here a additional offset of 20 millimeters here and i will use this um, yeah, additional reinforcement in both directions and the location will be here for example on this point and the dimensions are two by two meters and just clicking here on apply no not that, that. so oh and it once again. Twenty millimeters, okay. On this point and two by two meters. Okay. So um as I said before, there is now a new um, option here regarding uh, determined and yeah, buttons to um, overtake a determined uh, value. 
and uh, these buttons are required for a new function in uh, RFM6. And you can find this new function if you click here on this button once in the diameter, it's called auto and also in the spacing. So what you can do here now is you can um, assign a additional reinforcement, which is covering automatically the not covered reinforcement uh, from the first calculation. So in my case, I'm needing here a, um, yeah, additional reinforcement of around about 10 square centimeters per meter. And I can say that I would like to use uh, rebars in both direction with 12 millimeters. And uh, the spacing between the rebars, they, uh, the spacing should be determined automatically. So um, if I'm selecting auto, then the program um, yeah, shows me this additional parameters. And there's the minimum spacing and the maximum spacing defined here. So I will use uh, 10 centimeters as minimum and 30 as maximum. And confirming this with OK is the same in this other direction. OK, I click on apply. So the next um, is that I'm copying this one here. Copy and I just change the location so that is basically the same like i've done it before with the surface result adjustments this one and okay and the last one will be here okay and the last one is just in direction one i will use 10 millimeters here but this time on the top and bottom side this way or the auto, okay. I can click on okay. And it looks like this. So now I have just go to concrete design. Okay, so results. Just delete the results here. And now, due to the definition of this uh, slab, uh, due to the definition of this additional reinforcement here, I've just forgotten to assign this to surface number one. That was the problem. Okay. Now it's assigned, and if I switch them off here, or, uh, switch the um, display setting on, then you see here on these slabs this additional reinforcement. It looks like this. And um, due to the fact that we now in this state do not know um, which uh, value there is uh, yeah, assigned, we have just the info that it's our auto reinforcement. So with these settings, I can start the calculation once again. And now the program will, um, yeah, cover all the not uh, covered reinforcement automatically. And the result will be that I'm getting an info about the spacing I have to use. If I assign, for example, a diameter of 12 millimeter or 10 millimeter and so on. Um, maybe one point which I have not mentioned yet is that you cannot assign the auto function in uh, diameter and spacing at the same time. So that is not possible. You have to use either the automatic function for the diameter or the spacing. Okay, just wait a moment. And now it looks like this. So um, what you see now here is we are still in the results with the not covered reinforcement. Um, so you see now here that the not covered reinforcement is now zero here. It's just, um, if I'm switching over here, one uh, small part, it's 0 0.7 square centimeters. So I will neglect it here for this part. Um, but the other, um, on the other sides, it's also everything covered. And now you see here the info with the required um, or assigned um, uh, additional reinforcement. So the, the value in square centimeters per meter. And if you would like to see the spacing, then you have one option. You can go to the reinforcement on surfaces and to the um, tab here in the table surface reinforcement. And if you click on one item, 
then this uh, line or this item here also in the table will be highlighted. And in this case, I see that I have to assign uh, at least um, additional reinforcement of 12 millimeter and a spacing of 11. So maybe um, you think that uh, spacing of 11 centimeters is not so practical. So you can also um, use other values. So um, if I'm opening the button, uh, the, the dialog for edit reinforcement once again, um, you have now two options basically. One would be that uh, before you start the auto process, you can uh, switch um, the increment um, in this additional parameter settings so that you, for example, use just five centimeters. That would be an option. But you can also use now this determined um, value here and overtake this here in this cell and then you can edit it. So I could uh, yeah, overtake this value and modify it, for example, to 10 centimeters. That's one option using this button here. Um, it's also possible to select all items here, which um, have this uh, auto setting here. Um, and then you can use uh, the yeah, same button here at the uh, bottom end. And then the program um, yeah, uses the determined, automatically determined values here. Okay. I can assign this one and I will delete the uh, yeah, values just for concrete design. And before I'm starting the next calculation process, um, I will continue with the columns. So for the columns, um, uh, with the columns, I will show you two new features. One would be regarding the multi-edit. So um, in case you have um, yeah, a member with a different type of uh, reinforcement layout. So let's say, for example, in this member, I would assign eight rebars with a, diam with a diameter of 12 millimeter. It would look like this. So here we have our four rebars with 14 and here eight with 12 millimeters. Uh, in the previous versions, we had uh, the yeah, uh, limitation that if you uh, had different rave movement proposals, then it was not po possible to um, do here changes in the shear reinforcement and longitudinal reinforcement. And that is also solved now, this uh, little downside, mm, because now it's also possible to show here um, members with different settings. So you see, for example, that we have here um, yeah, the same rebar type, uniforms are running, but here we have a different number of bars, so from four to eight, and also different spacing. And here in this dialogs, um, there is basically a certain member uh, displayed of the selection. So if you would like to see another member, then you can switch here with this option between the members, and then you would see the, 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 the rendering for the selected member here. What I can now do here with this uh, new function is that I can uh, put several different members into one selection and change the reinforcement for all these members in one step. So I would set it back to four diameter, four rebars with 40 millimeters. And then it's the same for both. And I will get also the, um, yeah, name or the uh, description of the item back to, because it's it's uh, clear uh, the amount of rebars and the diameter. Okay, mm. that's basically regarding the multi-edit. So you have this multi-edit in for the shear reinforcement and also for the longitudinal reinforcement. In my case, it's also the same length, but it's also possible to use this uh, multi-edit if the um, lengths of the members uh, differ. So the next um, feature or option I would like to show you is uh, using member representatives for the design in concrete design add-on. Therefore, I will create types of columns. So let's say you have um, a lot of columns in your structure and you would uh, do the calculation with different types. Then you can create, for example, here 
or, or not create, but enter here a comment. Let's say in my case, type one uh, column, type one, this one, and the other four, I would add a comment and say type two, for example. So the next step would be activate the uh, member representatives in the base data dialog here. And if you um, yeah, switch or activate this uh, member representative wizard, then you have here the option to also consider here these comments. So I'm activating these comments here. And then if I click on OK, I am getting here these member representatives. So we have one member representative this the, with the blue uh, bubbles here um, and one with this green one. And I can maybe do a double click on it. And I could directly here switch the uh, name also in type uh, one column, apply, and this one maybe to type. Too. So it's not required to um, change it, but it maybe helps you afterwards in a documentation because if you, you can afterwards also create printout reports and uh, tables for the printout reports, including the name, and then it's maybe easier to, to uh, document the results for the individual types for the column. Okay, so what you now see is also that if you are working with this member representatives, then you can now also assign here shear reinforcement, uh, longitudinal reinforcement, and in general set all the design properties by um, using the um, member representatives. Okay, I'm confirming this with okay. And now you see here in the table with the input data, this member representatives. In my example, I would like to do the design just for the uh, type two and type one column. I will do the design for the member here. This one, okay. And then I will activate all my punching points here in the table, but I have to activate them also here in the structure. So this one, this one, and this one. It's for notes, and I will activate here the punching design check. And in the configuration for punching, mm. I'm switching here this option um, that I would like to use the provided longitudinal reinforcement. So um, as I said before, I. Uh, um, yeah, have used here this auto function to create this additional reinforcement. And um, I will now also use this provided additional longitudinal reinforcement here for the determination of the punching shear capacity. Okay, okay. That's basically all. I can now just save this file and then we can start the calculation here for the whole structure, but I will just switch off the types for concrete design. And then I'm starting the calculation process. And in the meantime, I'm switching over to the presentation. So uh, in the meantime, when the program is calculating, I will uh, just uh, give you a brief overview um, about the upcoming new features in our add-on for concrete design in RFM6. Um, and that is a, a random list. So it does not mean that the first mentioned um, feature will be released. It's just randomly listed. So. Um, the same uh, determination of required um, reinforcement like we ha like I uh, have shown to you uh, for the members. So with the option in the SLS configuration, uh, we are also developing the same um, option for the surfaces. Mm. Then nonlinear calculation is also in uh, development for ultimate limit state and serviceability limit state for slabs and members or beams. Then one uh, upcoming feature is also the merge of the shear and the punching shear um, 
yeah, uh, resistance uh, and reinforce uh, design checks and reinforcement into a, one graphic. Then of course fire resistance design checks, uh, seismic design of uh, concrete components according Eurocode 8. Then we are developing a interface between uh, our section and R from 6. Um, also to have the option to mm, reinforce uh, general cross section, general massive cross sections in our sections, uh, well, on our section, not just in terms of uh, longitudinal reinforcement, but also regarding um, stirrups. So you can, uh, or you will be able in future to create free form stirrups in our section and then import this cross section to our firm six and do the design check in our firm six. Mm. One open topic is also design of uh, steel fiber reinforced uh, concrete. Um, then the same function like we have seen now for the surface is with the uh, automatic uh, function. Uh, we are developing this for the members. Um, and yeah, in context to the Eurocode um, 8 uh, design checks, we will have also multi-leg steer up, not just in Z direction, but also in the uh, y direction, so in both cross action axis, and fatigue design according to Eurocode 2 is also in development. Like I said before, it's just a random list, so uh, the, the um, list here of this feature is not uh, in context to any release dates. Um, I will switch now over to the RFM back and we can just uh, do a quick overview of the results because there we have also some new features. Um, just one for the members. So I have um, done here the design on the member here. Uh, just for this rib, I'm, I'm, I have just used one member here. Um, and this is this uh, rib member. And there we have. Um, for example, if I'm switching over here, this one, and showing you just the design check for the shear force, then since some version, we have uh, extended here the amount of uh, intermediate results. So it's yeah, a little bit uh, much more, I would say, detailed now than before in the previous versions. So you have just to uh, click on this uh, small uh, arrow here and then you get more detailed results. Here you see the results for the new features regarding the shear joint. So that is all listed in the, the sign checks for the members. Then if I switch over to the member representatives, that's basically the same, but what I would like to show you is if you do the design here in the add-on with the member representatives, then you will get the same result for the individual uh, member representative. So I have here four columns and the four columns have the same uh, results. Um, if you would have to the individual results for the individual columns, then you can use, the, as I said before, the representative for input and you have to design then the individual members, not the member representatives. Okay, then regarding the surfaces, we checked the results before. I would like to show you one last um, yeah, new feature regarding the punching because in the latest version we now also implemented this load increasing factor uh, beta that is now also possible to um, activate here in this uh, detailed result. So under the design checks on nodes, you find here this load increasing factor beta. Um, if I'm switching over to the reinforcement, then I'm switching to the reinforcement on nodes. If you have activated the um, required uh, punching reinforcement here. Then you can click on isolines and by activating here values on surfaces, you will get the individual amount of required uh, punching reinforcement here in the individual um, uh, yeah, perimeters. 
And now, and that's the last uh, feature I would like to show you, you have here the option in the notes to also display the outermost control perimeter here. And that is also a yeah, connection to that feature which I mentioned before in the presentation um, that we plan to combine the uh, results of um, yeah, design check for shear force in this lab and also uh, punching shear um, above these columns. Okay, that are basically the mentioned new features in um, RFM6 and its add-on concrete design. And um, with that, I would hand over the screen back to Andreas. Okay, Paul, thank you for this nice presentation. Yeah, uh, for this good overview, what is the current state for the concrete de design in our program? Yeah, and the outlook in the future. Yeah, we promise to de develop our programs continuously also in the future. You will see it in the next webinar, uh, approximately in half a year. It's already planned. Before we close the webinar, I would like to show my screen to show you where I can find the recording and the provided model. Under global.com, you can find under news and events the webinars where you know, the already planned webinars and the accomplished webinars. That's today's webinar. I click on it. Yeah, but you will also get an email in the next days with a link to that page here, and then you will find the recording here in the middle. The PowerPoint slides, slides are already there, and both you can uh, download the model that uh, Power showed today. If you don't already use RFM6 and you would like to try for example the webinar uh, or other things, then feel free to download the free trial version of RFM6 or RSTAB 9, that's only for members. You can try the versions with all add-ons for 90 days. Yeah, just do it, for example, with the model of today's webinar. Okay, yeah, then I say thank you for your attention. Thanks to Paul for this nice presentation. Thanks to Alexander and Adrian for answering the questions. Yeah, maybe a last hint when you leave the webinar, where is a small survey? It takes you only one minute, I think. You can uh, yeah, score us. Just note that the worst uh, score is one and the best score is five. You can enter, yeah. Uh, what you wish for future webinars, uh, you can leave it empty as you want. Okay, then have a nice day and bye-bye.